That's the best kind of game. That's the best kind of win. And no doubt about it, slam dunk Phillies 14 to 3 over the Cincinnati Reds. They take the season series four games to three. And you just heard Jake Cave tell the guys good teams bounce back as we welcome you to Phillies Post Game Live, presented by our friends at Cure Auto Insurance. This guy, Ben Davis, is also the man because yesterday he said today's game would be a must win game for the Phillies. Why did you feel that way? And what did you think of what we saw? That was the fashion of how they lost yesterday. It was a demeaning loss. And we heard what Jake Cave just said. He said, you know, it didn't sit well with us. And and like to see them come back, pound out 23 hits, uh, score 14 runs. There were eight different guys in the starting lineup that had multiple hits. You just don't see it very, very regularly. Um, Bryson Stott now tied with Bo Bichette for the Major League lead in hits. Uh, this is a lineup that is is deep and obviously is still missing a couple pieces. But this is a lineup that can do this pretty much on a daily basis. It's a matter of if they do it. Bryce Stott has also created the headlines at the beginning of the game, the last two games, as he now has tied the record for games hit safely to begin a season 16 with Puddinghead Jones, Willie Jones, set in 1950. And that's kind of been a subplot, subtext to, to the beginning of this season. Yeah, and he got it out of the way quickly with a home run off Luis Sessa to lead off the ball game. Um, just, again, contributed. He was three for seven on the day. The dude had seven at bats. It's hard to believe, but uh, you know, ended up getting uh, getting a couple more after that. So he just he's been a spark plug at the top of this lineup, and I think he's there to stay. All right, let's talk pitching a little bit as we go out to Cincinnati and check in with Ruben Amaro Jr., who called today's game with Tom McCarthy. Rube, what did you think of Aaron Nola, who had failed to win his first three attempts, and the and the team as well, 0 and 3 in his first three starts. He gets his first win, and the team gets a big win as well. How do he look to you? Well, he was trying to avoid uh, being the, the first time in his career of not getting a win in his first four starts of the season. But uh, I, mean, he, I, think he, I think he did a heck of a job. And, and what I liked about um, what he did was attack the strike zone. Um, he's been a little off. You know, his stuff has not been quite there so far this year. But this this game, I think, will turn the corner for him. He had a much better breaking ball. Uh, he was throwing his sinker a little bit more consistently. Uh, had nice action on it. Uh, I, I did like the life on his pitches. He, his velocity is not really that high right now. He's somewhere averaging right around 91, 92 miles an hour on his fastball. But I do like the life on the on on his on his uh, pitches, and I do like the break on his on his breaking ball. Uh, that's a very good sign. Ruben, Brandon Marsh looks like he found something in this offseason. His, his extension is outstanding. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the, this show, but uh, he just seems like he has seen the ball and trusting himself a lot more than last year. Yeah, there's no question about it, and I think it's just his consistent approach. Uh, you know, he tinkered with a lot of things um, during the course of his career in the, with the Los Angeles Angels, um, and, and he was a guy that uh, kind of tinkered with a swing all the time. He's doing something very consistent now. His approach is consistent. He's staying behind the baseball. He's able to to make adjustments to pitches. It, he's able to pull the ball hard. He's able to hit the, drive the ball the other way. Um, he's And it's obvious that he's very confident with his approach, and uh, I, I love his at-bats. He, he, he racked up a bunch of hits today, but um, he had had not a, a bunch of them earlier in this series, but he also had a great approach, and that that's what happens. I mean, you, if you continue with that approach, you can barrel the ball up, and it'll uh, translate in, into base hits and to production. Benton said after yesterday's loss, Ruben, that today was a must-win game. And, and while you might say, well, you, you don't have any must-win games this early in the season, I agree with him. Five and ten record, the way they lost it yesterday. I thought that the way they came together as a team, put all those runs on the board, nine of them in the first inning. What does that do for a team, a win such as this, as they now go to Chicago? And it's huge. I mean, they obviously want to build on this as well, but it, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a long season. We talk about it all the time, but if you get yourself too far behind early in the season, uh, it can be very difficult to, uh, to, to bounce back. And uh, with the way that they've been playing, it hasn't been a clean baseball. It hasn't, you know, been real, real very good pitching. Uh, today, you got good pitching, and you got guys swinging the bats the way uh, we know that they can swing them. Um, it, it was a great sign. I, I love to see uh, Trey Turner get his uh, get all all the uh, base hits that he got 
uh, setting the table. Bryson Stott starting things off with that home run, as you talked about earlier. Uh, th these are all great signs, and and I also like the fact that JT Real Muto looks like he's getting locked in too. He's starting to get that that foot down with that uh, high leg kick, and uh, and he's putting some good swings on it as well. We're going to have more on JT a little bit later. We thank you, my friend. We'll check you tomorrow as the Phillies go on to play the Chicago White Sox with Zach Wheeler on the mound. Thank you, Thanks, Ruben Amaro Jr. from the booth at Great American Ballpark. We'll see you in a little bit inside the box score of a 14 to 3 Phillies win. You had eight. Every guy in the starting lineup had a hit. You had eight guys with multiple hits. You had 23 hits for this team. Uh, anything in particular, Ruben mentioned Trey Turner three for three with two walks and all the at bats. My goodness. Stott had seven. Marsh had six. Real Muto and Bohm and Cave had six. Uh, you think five's a lot. So, you know, seven and six at bats. Well, that's what happens when you get 23 hits. Everyone in that starting lineup scored a run as well. I, they were 11 for 27 with runners in scoring position. That's a whole series in one game. Uh, you don't, you don't, you don't see that every day. Uh, the at bats were really good, though.